Hello everybody and welcome to another parallel programming high performance computing and supercomputing tutorial using MPI. In the last video I showed you guys how we can use conditionals and how we can send and receive data. Uh, and also we stumbled upon a, you know, a form of threading. I, you, that's kind of the whole point of supercomputing is, is like doing what threading does for parallel programming. Though generally if people want to thread they use a threading module with Python. And to be honest with you, it seems to me like actually using MPI for Pi is the uh, easier method for threading. So uh, if you happen to do a lot of threading operations, I highly suggest you check it out. I was able to hit 100% CPU, uh, which is pretty substantial because I usually can't. I, if I run Python normally, I use about like 0.5% or something. So anyway, not going to spend too much time on that since that's not really what this uh, series was for. And so instead in this video I'm going to show you guys uh, an interesting little trick for sending data to and from uh, nodes in a little bit more of a dynamic way instead of hard coding it. So with that let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to go ahead and do here is from MPI for pi import MPI and then again com equals MPI.com underscore world and rank equal oops let's undercase this rank equals com dot rank size equals com dot size and name equals mpi dot get underscore processor underscore name okay uh, now we're going to do shared for the data we want to share and for this you can put whatever you want I'm going to say rank plus one times seven and now what we're going to do is we're going to send and receive data but we're going to do it in a fancy way so instead we're going to do com.send what do we want to send shared what destination do we want uh, this data to go to and for this we're going to say we want to send this to rank plus one but if let's say rank let's say we're going to use only two nodes for this if we used only two nodes, rank plus one would yield, let's say we have a rank zero and rank one. Well, rank one is going to send one to what? Uh, two. And if we haven't specified someone to take over that rank, we're going to get an error saying we don't have such a rank. So in order to compensate for that, we use the modulo and then size. And what this will do is cycle over for us. So let me uh, do the other side of this now. So data. Um, equals com dot RACV source and again here we're gonna have to use that um, same uh, setup only it's gonna be rank minus one modulo size because obviously for rank zero we need to go back to the, the end of the list basically so now what we're going to say is print name and that's going to print the processor name then we're going to print uh, rank rank and then print and we're going to say received what did we receive data uh, and then we're going to say which came from rank and all data is going to come from this rank minus one modulo size okay so basically what we're doing is we're using um, this size functionality to grab the total amount and then we're using rank to find out where we are in that rank and then we're just basically gonna shift over so it's basically we're set we're taking data from one node and sending it to the next node over basically and at the end we just send it back to the front so uh, let's go ahead and save that and I'm going to move this uh, via SCP to my two nodes. And whenever you're done doing that, let's come down here, hit the up arrow, make sure you're, you've got number processors two. And we're going to run SCT6.py, run it. And here we have, it spits out the names, master001, node002, rank1. Rank one receives a seven, which came from rank zero, obviously, you know, zero plus one times seven. And rank zero receives a 14, which came from rank one. Now, by that same token, we could do something like this. Since we didn't, you know, everything in here, remember before when uh, we were going to, in the previous video, when I wanted to do the threading, and then I was like, oh, let's see what, uh, 
uh, what would happen if I just put the two in, then we'll hit three later? Well, the problem was we specified one of those ranks because we're, we hard-coded, right? And so you obviously know that hard-coding probably by now is not the best idea. You want to have as much dynamic code as possible uh, or variable code. So let me bring up uh, this again. So as you can see here, nowhere in here do we have to have, you know, X number of ranks. We just have ranks. So now we could specify an unlimited number. So let me go do, let's do five, okay? Like that. Wait for it. And as you can see now that we've got, you know, the master node, master, master node. And now we've got all of these different things that they've received, 28, 21, 14, 35, seven, obviously all multiples of seven. Um, so as you can see, that we're, on, we're, we're able now to change the number of processors really simply. So it's a lot more dynamic. So if you begin to use stuff like what I've just shown you now, um, like with Modulo here, uh, for your sharing purposes, uh, it can become a lot more useful down the road. So you're not having to hard code how, you know, processor one always must interact with processor eight and 15 and all this kind of stuff you can you can make it a lot more dynamic so anyways um, that's going to conclude this video as far as uh, how to reference kind of a dynamic rank um, or node hopefully you guys enjoyed if you have any questions or comments uh, please feel free to leave them below as always thanks for watching thanks for all the support and the subscriptions and until next time